Greetings to you. I am Elijah Muhammad, the preacher of freedom, justice, and equality for my people in the United States of America, who has been lost and now found for the last 400 years. The great problem of the United States today, it is this lost and found people who was brought here for the purpose of doing slave work and becoming the property of the United States citizens the white citizens of America. We were brought here in our fathers not for the purpose of being made citizens of America, not for the purpose of being given equal rights with white American citizens, not for the purpose of granting to us civil rights, not for the purpose of intermarrying with the white people to become part of the family of the white people, and not for the purpose of sharing equally in this particular country called America in the Western Hemisphere, not to be landowners, not even to have the rights to do anything above the rights of a servant or a slave for the white people of America. This is what we were brought here for. This is what we have been used for. There is no justice in the law of America's court or constitution that we can claim belongs to us. There is no law or justice for us in America is only that which is granted to us, but not by rights of the people or the white citizens of America. There never will be a hundred percent vote for equal justice for the so-called Negro, even under the law of America. He wasn't brought here for that purpose. He was only brought here <coughs> according to the old slavery card of the white slave masters for the purpose of being a slave and <coughs> a piece of property owned by the slaveholders. And <coughs> They go so far in, in the uh, court of laws under slavery that even the so-called Negro can never redeem himself. He always and must remain the property of the American white people. Today, <coughs> throughout America, there is trouble going on between her once slave and herself. The trouble continue to rise. There are organizations of my people throughout the country wishes to be the property of the American white people. They wish to continue to be the property of the white man. They don't want no redemption 
or a redeemer. They don't want uh, to go for themselves. They don't want to have the responsibility of caring for them or carving out a future for their people like other nations. They have become lazy slaves who want to be granted just the right to live side by side with the slave master's children as equal with the slave master's children. And to share in, not say the land of the country, but just share in the opportunity of getting employed wherever they possibly can where the white man has created the employment for his people. And uh, the, the man and claim by the leaders of my people is for equal employment practices. Though when, when we look at the real true side of the matter, we must change this foolish idea of the man. We must remember that if we are free, we must act as free people. We must remember, especially the NAACP, that if we are free people, we must demand the freedom of actions and not say demand a chance to beg white America for what she has and force her to give it to us against her will. This I say to you, the NAACP, we can never get a future for our people on no such terms. <clears throat> the terms that you are seeking and the fair employment purchase for our people cannot be given freely to you and me until we are able to produce something worthy to be called a free people. We just have to come and talk face to face with the truth. You are trying to demand something that could change overnight, even in another administration. It could be changed. <coughs> even if civil <coughs> rights is passed in this administration for the next four years, it too could be changed because there is so many white people don't want to give the poor what slave civil rights, which I would say is limit and can be taken away from the so-called Negro at, at any time under any other president or Congress, if they want to. The white people by majority can change anything in the Constitution that they want to, if they don't like it for the Negroes. This you must understand. My their leaders of this <coughs> civil rights and integration movement. You have <coughs> a great ability to do something for self, but you are wasting that ability, education, and energy up into something that will never 
materialize to the good of the so-called 22 million <coughs> Negroes. These once <coughs> free people in Africa would have been very much satisfied if they had remained there and been with their brothers there today trying to get freedom for Africa for the African. They would have did a sight better job than you are doing who are trying to get equal justice under the law of America wherein our fathers was never promised no such. They would have been better off to have lived in the jungles and drink the milk out of coconuts and <clears throat> ran around and chased monkeys for their food, uh, some reptiles, than to have been here bound in the <clears throat> mental chains of slavery. And then after 400 years, Instead of their leaders trying to loose them for eternal freedom and eternal justice and eternal equality, they are trying to tie them back into the hidden chains of absolutely free slavery. We have nothing that we can rely on but the promises of the American white people and their government. This is promises they can make to us. But carrying it out 100% is another thing. The president may be uh, ever so kind and desirous to help us towards freedom and towards getting justice wherever that it demands for us or any human being. But nevertheless, he cannot control that other 99% of his people who thinks just the opposite. There is no 100% white thinking people for the good of the so-called American Negro. You won't find 100 standing out of a thousand that thinks good for the so-called American Negro. You will not think that they are so uh, evil and so uh, envious towards the black man of America's freedom, justice, and equality are a prosperous future until you actually try to get such for the black man. When you go out to get freedom, justice, and equality for the black man in America, then you learn that nearly 90% of all the whites is against it. There is some that limits this freedom, justice, and equality to certain things. But to give it to them a hundred percent, no. You will not hardly find ninety, per, uh, not, uh, pardon me, ten out of a hundred that want to see the Negro exercise freedom, justice, and equality along with the white man of America's a hundred percent. Civil rights are human rights. Civil rights is limited. 
but human right is universal. We should be seeking actually human rights. But the real thing that we should seek, it is the right to leave a people that have always been our enemies and still telling us to our face, we are still your enemies, we will we'll never give to you no equal justice or uh, equal rights among us. There is no equal justice in their courts for him. This you know. Why should we argue with the American white people over what they have, over uh, their own self and their own laws? Why should not we unite and ask uh, Americans to let us go free for ourselves as Israel did in uh, the days of Pharaoh and Moses? Moses seek separation and not integration. He didn't argue with Pharaoh for civil rights, nor human rights. But he argued with Pharaoh for the rights to leave Egypt and to leave the Egyptian, who had no love for Israel and who had no desire to see Israel prosper. How can we prosper in a government and among people who have no love for us? How can we build a future for our children among the people who are built upon the destruction of our children by teaching them contrary to the way of right and the way to a glorious future of freedom, justice, and equality? How can we expect to win anything other than common free slavery? What we look like riding around over the country with the white citizens of America claiming now that we are their equal when they own every square mile of America. What? Can we boast of if the civil rights are, uh, if the integration laws is made a law and is carried out according to the law in which they have made for such passage of bills? How can we feel independent as the white man in America, when we see <coughs> the whole country belongs to him, and when we see <coughs> that he are the creators, the producers of all that we eat and all that we wear and all of our homes is built, <laughs> our the material is created by his hand. Think over these things, civil rights leaders and integration teachers. I want you to uh, <clears throat> take a look at the thing that is most <laughs> essential for our future. We are 22 million people in America. And today we see the whole world. Not just one place, but the whole world confused. And we see injustice handed out to our people day and night here in America. We see them throwing bricks through windows and a little explosive gas, which doesn't mean anything much. That is not getting no place for us. A people have no arms. A people that cannot produce arms 
cannot have the freedom to make or build uh, factories uh, to manufacture arms for themselves. How can they win against a well-armed people? They cannot. Well, how can we do anything for our people? I say, my friends, we must remember that this problem of the so-called Negroes in America, lost and found, members of the aboriginal people of the earth, the black nation. The solution to that problem is a divine one. Try and solve it. Try and make attempts here and there throughout the country to solve this problem and lose. You cannot solve this problem without divine supreme being on your side. If you are able to solve the problem of the so-called American Negroes through the courts of the American white people and under their laws, what I mean, solve their problem so they will have a future so that they will be protected, so that they will have security, wherever they be, under the law, as uh, any other man. You must uh, think it over. You must be separated and you must be on some of this earth that you can call your own and you must go in for making laws for your own people and building a nation for yourself under divine supreme beings, guidance, as other nations have done, if you have, have this in mind, freedom, justice, and equality, and security, protection for your people. You have to do this yourself. You cannot... <coughs> Hope to do it yourself at the uh, way are uh, this uh, the solution that you have to solve the problem. You cannot get it like that because it's not in the very nature of the people to give their slaves equal huh, with themselves or sharers in their country. They are not going to do that. So the solution to this problem is a divine one. God Almighty has appeared among you and has given out his purpose and aims to free you and deliver you from such confusion and from such evil treatment that you are getting from the hands of your slave master's children. If it's not solved by the divine supreme being, all that is said concerning you and I, under parable and other open scriptures made by prophets from Moses to Muhammad, that it have to be solved by the divine supreme being. Take for an instant, if you understand scripture, the Old Testament, as you call it, the Torah, <coughs> and the Gospel, as you call it, of Jesus, all of this testifies to the truth of what I am saying. That the solution to the lost and found people is from God himself. You cannot get away from the prophesy of <clears throat> Moses and of Isaac and of Jesus who have absolutely given to us a clear picture of ourselves in our history here in America. 
Can they be made liar? No. You will be made a liar, but not these prophets. They don't be made a liar, regardless of what your plan or your solution may be, unless it's in accord with theirs. You have been here for 400 years, and God now desires to separate you from this people and give to you a place wherein that you can live in peace, wherein that you can build a nation for yourself. He has choose you, but you have not chosen him. You think that your <coughs> education and trainings under the white man will be able, or uh, rather sufficient, for you to deliver yourself. This is wrong. It can't be done. Not by no means. We are living in that time now. This is why you are having confusion. It is because God is after this poor so-called American Negro and he's running from his God. Flying into the arms of those who has destroyed him. Seeking refuge in the very murder's hand. Under the shadow of the murder. This you cannot find refuge under the shadow of the very murder who has murdered you and deprived you of freedom, justice, and equality. Will he now turn and give you freedom, justice, and equality? And if he does, you better doubt it. As being true, I warn you that if you will turn to God Almighty, and come follow me, that your problem will be solved overnight. God want to give to you what you are praying for, but you must turn to him and submit to him and let go the old slave chains. Let go that old promise of a future after death. You must forget about that old slavery teaching and come into reality and let us do something for self. We can do something for self. We can build a future for ourselves if we were united. All you have to do is unite and <coughs> unite on the base of that which will bring to you a great and a glorious future in this world. And that is in the religion of Islam and believing in Almighty God Allah. Come and follow me. I will lead you to the salvation that you are praying for and get you universal recognition. Get you the future that you uh, longing for. Get you uh, not only that, but get you a country and cities <laughs> and towns that you can call you on if you will come follow me. This is what you need. You are a nation and not a group of people. You are a nation and you must be separated and given a chance to go build a future for yourself. I thank you. I salam alaikum.